and welcome to Clapier. In this video, we will see how to create an attendance tracker with the help of pre-coded blocks that is available in Clapier. You can use the different blocks to help you create your app. So let's see how to make the attendance tracker using these blocks. So I'll go to my dashboard where I can create the app. When you log into Clapier, you will be redirected to your dashboard. So since I will be making the app from the beginning, I will click on new app. Now over here you will be able to create your app. Under the design app you can create your app as well as edit the app later on. So the first thing I will do is to give a name to the app which will be attendance tracker. Then I will click on add section and in this section I will be able to add various fields to help capture details that is necessary for the attendance tracker. So first I will give a name to the section on the right hand panel over here say details. Then I click on save and then I click on add field. Over here you can see all the various blocks that you can use to create your app. If you would like to know how each of these blocks work or how to customize them, you can check out our other videos for each of them. Now I will be giving an example for various types of attendance trackers. It all depends on your requirements. So you can either use any of the formats or you can mix and match them or you can change them according to your needs. So the first thing in this attendance tracker will be to capture the details of the person who is submitting in their attendance. It could be their name or email ID. So you can use the single line text to capture name and email. You can also use the phone number block to capture the phone number. But instead I will select the calculations and logic block. I have selected this particular block because instead of allowing the user to type in their name and email manually, I would like the system to automatically generate that. So on the right hand panel under the label name I will type in submitter name and then under the formula where you can implement your calculations and logic I will type in the variable name at the rate submitter name. This particular variable name will allow the system to automatically generate the name of the person who is submitting in the attendance. Now I click on save then again I click on add field then another calculations and logic block and under label name I will type in submitter email. Now under formula I will type in the variable name at the rate submitter email. This particular variable name will allow the system to automatically generate the email with which the person has logged into Clapier. So now I click on save. Now in the attendance tracker app I would also like to capture the date and time. So I will click on add field then click on date selector. Under label name, I will just mention date. Then I go to the advanced options. I would like the system to automatically capture the current date. So I'll enable this option. And I do not want any changes to be made after submission. So I will disable this option. And since there is no need to show the current dates, I will disable this as well. Now I click on save. Then I go to add field. Click on time selector block. Under label, I will just mention time. Then I go to the advanced option and again I want the system to automatically capture current time so I will enable this and I don't want any changes to be made after submission so I'll disable this option. Now I click on save. So this is a very basic example of an attendance tracker. If you would also like to add in the option of clocking in and clocking out so that you know the exact time in which the person has clocked in and clocked out as well. So you can click on add field. Click on single selector. On the right hand panel under label I will just type in select and for the options I will mention clock in and clock out. Keeping in mind it is mentioned one after the other and there are no spaces after each word. I will also mark this particular field as required because I do not want the person submitting in the attendance to miss out in this field. So I will enable this. Now I go to the advanced option. In case a person has made a mistake in selecting the option, I will just keep this as enabled so that they can change it later on. Now I click on save. So let's see how this app works. We go to app home where your app is now live. You can see the submitter name and email has automatically been captured. If a person has logged in with another email ID, that particular email will be captured over here along with the corresponding name. You can also see the date and time has been captured. All the person has to do now is either select clock in and clock out. So once I select clock in, I can click on submit. 
All your submissions can be viewed under the Submissions tab. Once you click on a submission, all the details about it will be captured on the right hand panel over here. Now once you have created your app, it is also ready to use in the mobile version as well. So all you have to do is download the Clapia app from either Play Store or App Store and it will be ready to use. So let's see how it looks like. So this is my mobile screen with the Clapia app installed on it. So I will go ahead and click on this app and then I will select the Attendance Tracker app. You can see that the app is now live and ready to use. It has also captured the name and email automatically as well as the date and time. So all I can do is now is select either clock in or clock out. Since in the web version I selected clock in, over here I will select clock out. And then click on submit. Even in the mobile version you will be able to view all your submissions by clicking on view submissions. And you can see our earlier submission for the clock in has been captured over here and our new clock out submission is captured on the top. You can also click on a submission to view all the details. Now let's go back. Now this is one of the examples of an attendance tracker. So say for example you have a QR code in which you can scan for clocking in and clocking out to submit your attendance. Let's see how to build that app. I go back to the dashboard and I click on new app again and I'll follow the same procedure. I'll give an app name as attendance tracker and then click on add section and give in all the various fields that we have mentioned earlier. So let me just go ahead and do this quickly. Okay, so now I have given in the attendance tracker name and I have given in all the various fields as the earlier attendance tracker app. Now I click on add field. And then I click on code scanner. This code scanner block can scan either QR codes or barcodes. All you have to do is configure them. There are various generators online with which you can configure your codes. So over here on the label name, I will just type in scan code. Again, I will mark this particular field as required. And then I go to advanced options. And since I don't want anybody to manually input the code, I will disable this option. And if you would like the camera to automatically open up when the app loads, you can enable this option. If you do not want any submissions to be changed later on, you can always disable this option. Now we click on save. For this particular app, I will directly jump ahead to the mobile version and we'll see how it looks like. Now over here, I will click on the new attendance tracker app that we have created, which is on the top. And the moment I click on it, the camera will immediately open up so that we can scan the QR code or the barcode. Just as I mentioned, the camera has now opened up and we can scan the QR code to clock in. The QR code has now been captured and as I scroll down, you can see that clock in has been mentioned. So now I can go ahead and click on submit. Now since we scanned the QR code for clocking in, we can also scan barcodes. I have configured a barcode for the clock out option. So let's see how to scan the barcode. Click on submit another. You can see that the camera has opened up again automatically. And now I can go ahead and scan the barcode for clocking out. As you can see, the barcode has now been captured and it says clock out under scan code. So now I can submit this as well. So the code scanner block can scan both QR codes and barcodes. Now let's go back to the design app. Let's go ahead and make another attendance tracker with which a person when submitting in their attendance also has to take in their photo. So I go back to the dashboard and create another app with the same titled attendance tracker with all the various fields. So let me go ahead and do that quickly. Now that I have added all our relevant fields, I will click on add field and then click on camera image and files. So this block will help you in uploading any pictures. On the right hand panel, I will change the label name to take selfie, but you can change it as you wish. I'll also mark this field as required. Then I go to advanced option and under allowed file types, I will select images for camera uploads. Since I do not want the person to make any gallery uploads, 
or videos or documents, I will select only this option. Now maximum number of file types allowed. You can mention how many numbers you would like. For now, I'll just mention one. Over here, I will disable the option to allow changes after submission. I will click on save. And now let's see how this works. I go back to the app home where the app is live. Again, you can see submitter name and email has been captured, date and time as well. I can select clock in. And then to take a selfie, I can simply click on the option over here. And you can see that the camera has now opened up where I can only take a selfie of myself. Now that the image has been captured, I can go ahead and submit. Let's see how this looks like in the mobile version. Now in the mobile app, I will click on the new attendance tracker that we have created for taking a selfie. And here we can see all the fields as well. Now I can select clock in or clock out. So since we already selected clock in, over here I will select clock out. And then I can click on the camera button over here so that I can take a selfie. You can see that my camera has now opened up and I can only take images through camera uploads. So this way you can take a selfie to authenticate the attendance. Now I can go ahead and submit this. Again, we can view all our submissions. If I click on the clock out submission, you can see all the details have been captured as well as the image. Now let's go ahead and make another attendance tracker with which you would like to capture the GPS location of the person. I will go ahead very quickly to my dashboard and create another app again. Now that I have added all the relevant fields, I will click on add field and then I will click on GPS location. This GPS location block is very useful in attendance trackers because if you have multiple site locations, then you can know where exactly the person who is submitting the attendance is from. So under label name, I will mention just location and then I go to the advanced option. I will keep this particular option enabled itself because I want the system to capture my current location. Since I do not want any manual changes to be done, I will keep it as disabled and I will click on save. Now you can either view your app in the app home, but for now I will directly jump ahead to the mobile version to see how this looks like. So now again I will click on the new attendance tracker app that we have created. And over here you can see all the fields have been captured automatically by the system as well as the map has been generated in the app. It has also taken my default current location. You can zoom in and zoom out on this app and you can also see the GPS coordinates have been captured. So I can go ahead and now click on submit. When I click on view submissions, you will also be able to view the map with the current location captured. Now let's go back. Now for the last example of an attendance tracker, since we have already seen how the GPS location works, I would also like to enable geofencing. So let's go ahead and see how this looks like. I have added all the fields in this new attendance tracker app. Now again, I will click on add field and then select GPS location. Again, I will change label name to just location. Under advanced, I will want default to current location to be enabled. I will keep this second option disabled so that I do not want any manual changes and I will enable geofencing. Geofencing is very useful when you want to allow a person to submit their attendance when they are at a particular distance away from the site location. So over here under designated locations, I will have to give the GPS coordinates. If you would like to know how to get the GPS coordinates of a site location, you can check out part two of the GPS location block. So right now I will just paste the values of the GPS coordinates that I have for the site location. And for the radius, I will type in 200 meters, which means that a person can be 200 meters away from the site location and still submit their attendance. Now I click on save. And I will jump directly to the mobile version to see how this looks like. Again, in this mobile version, I will click on the new attendance tracker app that we have created. And as I scroll down, 
you can see that the GPS location has taken my default location. But there is also an error message that has come over here that says I need to be within 200 meters from the designated location. Now let me zoom in in this map a little. My default location is over here at the moment, but the site location that I have put in with the coordinates is actually over here. So this distance is well over 200 meters. In this way, we can enable geofencing so that the person is well within a certain distance of the site location to make a submission. So these are the few examples of how you can make an attendance tracker app. You can also download all the submissions. So let me just take an example. And now we go to submissions. So I click on app home and then submissions. And over here, I have given some submissions for clocking in and clocking out. And all these submissions can be downloaded by clicking on the option over here. It will be downloaded in a CSV format. Now I can click on the downloaded sheet. And you can see that it has downloaded all the submissions that was there in the Clapia app. You can check who has submitted by checking the submitter name and their email ID. And you can also see the date and time of when they have clocked in and clocked out as well. You can also perform calculations based on these submissions. For example, if you want to calculate the salary on the clock in and clock out time for every month, you can do so as well. You can make another app in Clapier for calculating the salary by interlinking these apps. You can also check out the app templates that is available in Clapier on the left hand side of your workplace. So if you need an attendance tracker example, you can click on app templates and you can see a list of templates that is readily available to use. So the attendance tracker you can find over here. There are various types of attendance tracker. It is based on your requirements. So you can simply click on one of the templates and then click on import. Once you click on import, the app should be readily available on your dashboard. So you can see the daily attendance tracker app is available over here. If I click on it, there are two apps available. Once I click on the attendance app, I can go to the design app over here and I can make certain changes based on the requirements. So these are the multiple ways in which you can create attendance trackers in Clapier. If you have any queries in the configuration of attendance trackers or any other features in general in Clapier, you can request support by clicking on the option over here or email us directly to support at clapier.com and we will be happy to assist you. Thank you.